Okay, the first thing we have to do is disconnect the battery. Um, if we don't disconnect the battery, what will happen is this main um, alternator lead here will hit the uh, the engine and um, you'll blow this fuse. I'll show you what fuse it is. Okay, so here's the fuse here. This will be the fuse you have to um, replace. Okay, um, if the lead does touch, touch the motor, um, it'll blow this fuse, but the fuse could look okay. It won't have any symptoms. The breakage will be down either side of the fuse. Okay, so to replace that fuse, you have to um, get this, pop this out, and um, I think you also have to pop this out as well. But that's the 100 amp fuse you'll have to uh, replace. Okay, so it's uh, the fuse isn't, it's not in the relay not in this one it's in this one so there's the front of the car um, and that's it there okay I believe there's bolts on either side and there are videos out there on how to uh, replace that fuse but before putting the new alternator in um, disconnect the battery first thing you do okay if this lead if you forget to disconnect the battery if this lead touches the engine that's your uh, that's the fuse there that you'll have to replace and there may not be any symptoms okay it may be blown but uh, you won't be able to see any proof that it's blown okay it's the 10th of the 11th 2022 and uh, I've got a, uh, an alternator that uh, no longer works and I can show you what that looks like. So we'll just hop in the car. And there's a saying that uh, if it can happen, it will happen and at the uh, most inappropriate uh, time. I've just had three days off and I forgot to uh, check my car. So bingo. So. Uh, first of all, because I didn't check my um, my battery gauge, and there it is there, um, I might have picked it up on the weekend, however, uh, I didn't check my car, and uh, let's see, so if I turn on the ignition, then uh, I'll start the car. And uh, we can see here the battery gauge. There it is. Okay. So I'm driving along and I see that. Um, and then I look down here. And uh, it, this, this should really be on 14 volts. So it should be just, just here. Okay. It should be on 14 so that's there. Just get that flare out of the way. But instead it, it was holding on 12 for a while. But now it's dropped down to uh, say 10 or 11. So that's that's a typical um, alternator fault. Okay. So if we look at the alternator we could say pretty well that it's the original alternator. So this Toyota 2.2 uh, .2 Toyota uh, Camry has got uh, about 270,000 kilometres uh, on the clock. So that's probably the original um, alternator. I highly recommend replacing an alternator at least uh, every um, 2,500 kilometres. So if we come along here, this is a gel battery. And uh, that was green down that that inspection hole there that was green yesterday but now it's uh, now it's white so 
Um, we can see the colour code here. Okay. So. So that's a fairly new battery. It was replaced on the 8th. And uh, it's now the 11th. So. Um, yesterday I jumped on the internet and I got a new uh, alternator. So it's very very easy to uh, replace, just undo two bolts, drop it down, put the new one in and uh, tighten it up. So, uh, okay, well that's the introduction to the uh, the video. About a month ago I was working on the uh, third brake light and the battery did get low. However, I put it on charge and I drove to work and back for a week and I'm thinking after the week it was still, it still wasn't charged and I'm thinking what's What's going on? Do I have to buy a, bat a new gel battery if it, uh, if it drains of electricity? But no, the, uh, the alternator's probably been bad for a, uh, a fair amount of time. So, okay, well, until I get the alternator. Okay, well, it's Monday the 14th of the uh, 11th, 2022, and uh, the new alternator's here already. So, uh... Um, I have tested that the plug goes into the new alternator that's, uh, that's over there. So I'll just show that's the old alternator. And uh, this is the new alternator. As I say, the plug uh, is the same. This cost $170 on eBay. It's uh, pretty much identical. So here again is the uh, original alternator. It's a Bosch. Okay. I have bought a new plug for the uh, new alternator, although this, uh, this original is the same. The plug is the same for the... Uh, that will plug straight into the new, uh, the new alternator. Okay. I don't know if I've mentioned it before, but I don't really agree with this area of the original connection. Um, it's got... A, uh, a drop down zone or a zone where dirt could collect. This is sitting upwards and you could get garbage in there, but okay, well, I'll, um, what have we got? We've got one nut here, um, we've got another one here. Just get a bit of focus on that one, but that goes through to a very small um, 8 mil nut, I would say, just there, so I don't. I don't understand what exactly is going on there. Okay, just trying to focus that. Okay, that's that's all that it seems. I'll have another look. So yes, it's looking like at this stage we've got one nut there, one nut at the back here. That's uh, that's what we're looking at there. Okay. Um, there is. A large nut here but that's holding the engine mount I think it's got something to do with that and forward of that so we've just got this one here and this one here um, that'll back off the belt will become loose and I'll put the new one on I'd just like to say thanks so much to uh, Toyota for the design of this engine there's lots of room to uh, to move and you just can't ask for anything um, it's just not possible to have anything easier to work on than this. Um, where you do run into problems with this engine is things like the... Uh, I think it's the power steering uh, belt down there and the power steering pump. How you would work on that would be extremely difficult. Um, the timing belt would be uh, probably a nightmare. But this alternator belt is uh, is really good.
I see that this is unfortunately rounded off a bit so this may not be the original um, I would say that it is because it's very similar in wearing I would say that this has been uh, undone just to adjust the belt okay I've worked on this for an hour and a half to get that undone it's uh, it, it is fairly rounded off but you know looking at it it's not too too bad it just it just would not come off I've tried uh, right I tried spanners um, imperial uh, uh, nuts I mean sockets I mean um, you know and this is just the array of uh, of stuff that I've used to to try but um, how I got it undone was uh, I had a, a big collection of uh, metric sockets and that's the, the rest of them down there and I just kept on trying and uh, eventually I found one and that's it it's a 12 uh, millimeter socket and uh, it doesn't have you know a lot of uh, it's only got a few uh, minimal uh, contact points there but uh, anyway that did the job and what does the job does the job so now I can go ahead and uh, I should be good to go I'll, I will have to get a new bolt but uh, well so be it Okay, so there it is. At this stage, I've got the uh, the negative removed from the battery, just so that there's no uh, sparks flying anywhere. Um, this here is the uh, that's the adjustment mechanism there, and that's the retainer. So they're loose, and I'm just loosening off this uh, the rear bolt here. So the the belt's off. I've just got a clamp just to hold it so it doesn't fall off and uh, the alternator is uh, is loose okay so now the bolts are out we can see the uh, adjustment mechanism the front uh, lock-in bolt goes there and that's the uh, the rear bolt port there go around the other side um, just here is the uh, the main rear uh, bolt port and here we've got the uh, the adjustment treble uh, that's the nut that was rounded off and uh, that's the other side of the, uh, the adjustment mechanism there okay so here's the uh, that's the adjustment bolt that's the bolt that was rounded off that is uh, five uh, centimeters long okay and it has a 12 a 12 millimeter socket and that's the rear um, that is I'll tell you what the measurement is it's a 13 millimeter socket and the bolt is um, 90 millimeters a bigger pardon yes 90 millimeters or nine centimeters what the actual um, thread is on that I don't know it looks like a coarse thread that's uh, that's what it looks like Okay, so there it is. I don't think it really necessarily has to be that 
hard to get out but that could be 22 years old but uh, yeah that's that's finished Okay, so here's the new alternator. It did make a, a slight grating noise when I first turned it. I don't know what that was, but anyway, it seems very healthy. So um, I've just put some uh, oil on these mating surfaces, just so that hopefully it goes in better. So, okay. Okay, well I just uh, tapped that side with the hammer and uh, it went straight in, so that's just got to be put into line with the bolt. And now that's lining up with the, uh, or close to the, uh, the adjustment uh, mechanism there, so, okay, good. Okay, so I'd say that bolt would be possibly meeting the uh, the thread there. Um, let's see what we, if we can put the the belt on. The belt's on. Okay, the adjustment mechanism will move a bit. So we'll just go ahead and put the the bolt in if we can. There we go. No. Okay. Okay, this nut uh, is now threading in. I can probably wind down the uh, the belt adjustment mechanism. Yeah, so that's tighter. Okay. Cool. Okay, I think I think this front nut is a uh, eight millimeter. That's eight millimeters wide. Okay, as we can see, that's the correct nut. So that spins around there, and that is an M8 nut. Okay. So uh, I've got to get a bolt, uh, I think 50 millimetres uh, long with an M8, uh, with the same thread as that, so I can just go to the uh, hardware shop and get that. Okay, so at this stage all the bolts are in, I'm just going to get the, the belt tight. Okay, I'm comfortable with that. I think that, that amount of travel is okay. So now, just go ahead and uh, tighten up this bolt. Uh, this bolt is rounded off, so this is all I'm going to give it. And now I'll tighten up the, uh, the rear bolt. I'll try the correct uh, socket, see how that compares with the last one, yes, that's, that's much easier. And it's just hitting that uh, the top of that, so I might use a spanner, see how a spanner goes, no, it's not going to work. If at first you don't succeed, try and try and try and try and try and try and try. Um, yep, that, the end of this is hitting up against there. And we're going to get it. So not 
gonna push our luck, that'll that'll do. Okay, so I've now attached this uh, this bracket. Um, now that that snapped in there. Um, okay, this is going on there. I'll put the plug in last. Okay, that nut stays on there. We've got this uh, type of washer. And uh, it's got these tangs. And they just sit on the 10mm bolt. So... Or something like that and this okay that has to line up with these uh, these two holes the two holes top and bottom so I might have to just rotate that and have that line up like so and uh, we'll put on our washer and our nut, oh sorry, I'll put on our other washer. So this is a spring washer, is it? I think it is. No, it's just a smaller washer. Okay. So that no doubt will not leave room for our 10 mil nut and it won't leave room for our 10 mil nut so off they go and on we go tighten that up a bit won't over tighten it I'm not going to push my luck too much with that one And voila, we have our alternator. Okay, what has happened here is unfortunately I didn't disconnect the battery. Um, the alternator lead has touched the air conditioning and blown this fuse here. Okay, I do say this later on in the video, but this is the fuse you'll have to um, change um, if you're not getting uh, voltage. Um, so with this fuse it may appear not to be blown okay it might look perfect but it's still the fuse to uh, change so you have to pop out this section um, there's two bolts on either side to replace the fuse it's it's fairly complicated to change so I highly recommend just disconnecting the battery putting the alternator on reconnect the battery and there won't be any problems okay let my um, my mistake save you. Okay, here's the moment of truth. I'll go and start it up. Okay, well the good news is that we do have more than uh, 12 volts, although the, um, the battery has been on charge, so that's just a bit more than 12 volts. It should really be on four, 14 volts. So it's on 12 volts, but it should be on 14 volts. Um, however, the good news is, is that we don't have a... Uh, a battery, um, we'll call it an idiot light because that's uh, that's what people call it. That's the uh, that's the door. It's a door light there, but uh, there's no idiot light. So, um, well, the next thing to do is take it for a test drive, and uh, well, we'll see what we've got. An interesting thing to point out is that. Um, 
this battery has been on charge for say five or six days and yet it's still uh, it's still white and uh, as we see here it should be green so it has been on charge but um, it's not showing a green light as I say this is a gel battery and I'm still getting used to gel batteries one theory could be that because the battery has been on charge and it's got good charge um, maybe the alternator doesn't have to um, you know produce output at 14 volts I, uh, I don't know that yet but uh, this will be an interesting thing and we'll see okay we'll do a start up after replacing the fuse with a new alternator so that's 100% uh, perfect